welcome to the super fancy dress party because it's Halloween. So why not go all out in the fanciest dress I own that I've had for I don't know how long. You're gonna annoy me this whole video, aren't you? <clears throat> While we eat delicious things from I don't know where, it's the birthplace of Tetris. And I feel like I should know this, but I don't. So just bear with me because uh, we're gonna be figuring this out together. Also, this mask is kind of messing with my eyes. I'm not gonna lie. It may come off sometime during the video, depending on what it decides to do. So, could you be less annoying, please? The tiny dog has decided to be a part of the video, which is fine. So, come on. Welcome to Russia! We've been to Russia before. Welcome back to Russia. Hello, Russia. How are you doing? Can you be a little less nosy? My darling. Don't turn into, don't make it one of those videos where you're just in the way all the time. Anywho, welcome to Russia. Of course, we come with our uh, fancy Russia flag and then all the fun little things that you can do on the back. As per usual, we eat the universal yums and everything is already in Russian and I don't know what, uh, what any of it says. So here you go. Let us start with the uh, Le Russia booklet. Oh, information. Anywho, happy Halloween, by the way. If you don't celebrate Halloween in Russia, do you celebrate anything? Because I don't actually know. Do tell. Let us let us all know. Let's let's enlighten each other. This is uh, let's see. So we've got the meaning behind um more Russian that I'm not going to pronounce correctly. So here we are. Matryoshka, maybe. Do you remember those little Russian stacking dolls? They're called Matryoshka dolls. Traditionally, the outside doll looks old and friendly, but anyone who has ever played with one knows that there's so much more under the surface. In many ways, they're a good metaphor for modern Russia, and a fine jumping off point for our adventure this month. When you think about our journey this October, consider that we're only reaching the second or third doll, beyond the superficial but not quite at the heart of things. We hope to bring you a bit more insight into this complex country through details of Russia's amazing food and talented people. Stories that aren't quite newsworthy, but represent the everyday elements of society. But we'll get nowhere close to exploring the innermost doll, the little Matryoshka, the true depths of Russia. For that, we recommend reading our guided discussion questions on the back cover, and speaking as a family or group of friends about your viewpoints on this month's destination. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I probably won't do that. So as we begin this journey, I'm just here for the We'll start by focusing first on something that doesn't get discussed enough, our similarities with the Russian people. Turns out we all like delicious yums, from preemie black currant marshmallows, oh my god, I don't know, to savory shish kebab chips, we're, we'll guarantee that there's more than a few yums in this box that make this intriguing country worth a visit. Let's begin. And then of course we've got the little dollies right in a row there, down to the tiniest little Russian dolly. Because this is specialty yums box time, pardon me while I move certain things, I've had to pull out my entire computer setup just to do this video. But because we are fancy video time, we will be eating all the things in one go rather than me snacking them as we go. So, and of course I have fancy goblet of milk. So, let us start with, they mentioned blackcurrant marshmallow. Now I'm very intrigued and I'm thinking this is probably the blackcurrant marshmallow. Blackcurrants are very delicious. And the reason that we don't have them in the USA is a very long story. This looks amazing, by the way. Uh, which I'll let you look up. I'm mm -hmm, starting to think maybe I probably should have put something over my dress because I might get crumblies everywhere. That's okay, we'll just, we'll just do this and then hope it works. So anyway, it smells like lovely dark chocolate. Oh, I got it out without even reading it. Now, hold on, we must read about this beautiful, beautiful little treat that we have here. This is the black currant zephyr, the chocolate-covered black currant marshmallow. Prepare your taste buds for Russia's most heavenly dessert, the zephyr. Named after Zephyrus, the Greek god of the gentle west wind, I thought this sounded familiar, this marshmallow meringue is beloved across Russia for its delicate and airy texture, reminiscent of a light breeze. Made with egg whites, sugar, gelatin, and fruit, these sweet pillows come in three distinct varieties, white, pink, and chocolate-covered, and are typically enjoyed with tea as a late afternoon snack. I have milk, so... 
We've brought you the scrumptious chocolate-covered variety infused with blackcurrant, a sweet berry that grows throughout Russia. We have a feeling that after one bite, you'll be floating on air. I don't doubt it, because I like mushrooms. Uh, er, mushrooms. I like marshmallows. I like blackcurrants. And the two together sound delectable. There's the inside for you a little bit, if it will a focus, which it may not because it technically does, but the marshmallow is infused with blackcurrant. It's quite lovely. Very blackcurrant tape. Mm. It smells good too. It's a very soft marshmallow. So it is very light and airy, which I appreciate. We should still have a little bit of that for later. But that is quite good. And if you have the chance to have a black currant um, marshmallow fluffy happy thing, yes, I know. I'm sorry, you can't have it. You are one of the exceptions that is not allowed to have it. The tiny poor dog. I should have given you a Halloween hat. We should have given you a Halloween hat. But we didn't. Let's move on. Let's try the things that was on the top. These giant chips that do, in fact, say it's snack time. And because it's snack time, uh, let's eat them. So, let's find these. These are shashik, shashlik potato chips. Shish kebab flavored potato chips. Wishing it was still summer. We have good news. These puff chips bring the flavor of a Russian summer straight to you. Each bite is packed with the savory taste of authentic Russian shashlik, a grilled meat shish kebab, uh, bl words, a grilled meat shish kebab enjoyed during the country's warmest months. Though the flavor might taste like barbecue, it isn't your typical backyard picnic. Russia, um, Russian shashlik is made from a secret family recipe handed down from generation to generation. While each family's version is slightly different, the recipes typically include lamb chunks marinated in a zesty concoction of onions, vinegar, and secret spices, and sometimes a splash of vodka. So not only do you get an exclusive taste of Russian tradition with this yum, you'll also get a bite of summer in the fall. Mmm. Sounds delicious. There's even like a little, little, little bleh face on the counter. Like it's having a good time. It smells nice. They're, so they're like kind of like small little, little floofy chips, kind of like the airy, the airy kind of chips. Oh, they're softer than I expected. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like the first one, the first thing I'm getting here is onion or garlic or something. I'm really surprised with this texture. I expected um, far more crunch, but it's more a soft bite kind of thing. They don't smell very strong. The flavor isn't very strong either, but it's there. Quite tasty. And it's a fairly large bag, so... It's a pretty good... snackable size. I would say it is kind of like a, a faint barbecue-ish flavor. Georgian Proud. Is this from Georgia? Product from Georgia? Not sure. Let's take goblet. Goblet drink. Ah. I think I have a nice glass of milk. It's not very spooky for Halloween, but, you know. So let's try. Next we have... This. I don't know what it is. But it looks like there might be some kind of cheese, and I honestly don't know what that is. That weird, um, what is this? Whatever this is. I don't know. Very odd. Let's find out. These are holodets and horseradish. Oh, maybe it's a chunk of horseradish. 
horseradish husks, meat jelly, and horseradish rye breadsticks. Get excited, you're about to indulge in one of Russia's most iconic specialties, Holovitz. If that's enough motivation to get you to open the bag, we encourage you to do it right now before you read any further. Too late, I'm going to read further. For the timid, let's talk about Holovitz. I've never heard of them in my life. Sorry, Russia, but I live in the middle of America, so I know nothing. These, uh, Holodets is the Russian word for cold meat jelly. This popular dish is made with pig, cow, or chicken feet suspended in a gelatin base and traditionally topped with spicy mustard or horseradish. Now, hang on before you throw this bag across the room, you won't find any actual meat jelly in here. Instead, you get to discover the bold and unique flavor of Holodets and horseradish packed into tiny rye breadsticks. Still feeling a bit hesitant? Trust us. If you like horseradish, I do, you'll like these. In fact, once they're gone, you might actually find yourself itching to try the whole thing. I've never been into the idea of meat jelly. And I like to think myself an adventurous sort of eater, willing to try different things. But the simple fact is, that sounds gross. I, I don't want to eat feet in gelatin. Thank you. No offense, Russia. this flavor. It's not very strong. I taste a lot of the rye. Got some horseradish. Got something else that I don't know what it is, so I'm assuming that's the meat jelly part. It doesn't really have a soup unique flavor. It's mostly like, you know, bread in there. kind of confusing. I guess because I can't really place the rest of the flavors. But it's fine. I like my chips. Very crunchy. Mm. Alright, now enough crunching. Let's continue. We have many yums to get through. Cleanse the palate. Let us move on to the Korovka, maybe. Fairy tale roll cake. This is a chocolate dipped baked milk. Um, there's the baked milk from the last time. The, the, uh, the hint from last last uh, month. This may look like a plain pastry, but something much more meaningful. For many Russians, this cake is part of both their country's tough history and their childhoods. Originating during Soviet times, this tender sponge cake was rolled in a thick buttery cream and served in slices. But the most intriguing part about fairy tale cake hasn't ever been on the inside, it's the decorations. For many years, the cake logs were famously adorned with elaborate icing swirls, colorful flowers, dried fruits, and homemade chocolate. Check it out below. Wow. They have a picture with fun things on it right there. Today, the iconic cakes are still enjoyed throughout the country, but as you'll see when you open this package, they're not or ornately decorated anymore. That's where you come in. Put on some sprinkles, icing, chocolate syrup, peanut butter. It's This is called fairy cake, after all. Let your imagination run wild. I don't have any of those. Well, I have peanut butter, and I think I might have chocolate syrup. I don't have sprinkles or icing or anything fun. Is that what you do in Russia with your fairy tale baked milk cake uh, roll cake? Do you add things to it? It looks like it comes with chocolate on the bottom. It feels a bit like that, too. Luckily, it hasn't been too hot lately because it is fall, so I haven't had to worry too much about things melting. Ooh, there is chocolate on the bottom of it. Why, hello, fairy tale roll cake thingy. Come join me on my uh, adventure through food. So this is the fairy tale roll cake. Look how pretty it is. Look how lovely that is. Fairy tale roll cake. It's very fallish. Let us try. It smells lovely. It smells like a nice pastry. Mm. It's quite nice by itself, really. I may have spoiled myself. I could see how putting a little, like, a strawberry or something on top of this would give it an extra little bit of fun. So it's like a nice spongy cake. 
some nice chocolate on the bottom. Just like a mild sweet flavor. This would be lovely with this. Last bite. Probably should have brought a napkin with myself. There are still so many delicious things to be had here. Ooh. They sent me two of them. Oh, lovely. That will be for later. For now, moving on to the next fun, delicious thing. It's, who knew, a grapefruit chocolate bar. Oh, you got your little head in my lap. Well, you did until I pulled out more food. So, uh, it's, uh, hmm, it looks uh, quite nice. So this is a dark chocolate bar with grapefruit. Who knew? The problem with living in Russia, rather than, let's say, Florida, there's no grapefruit. Due to Russia's chilly climate, fresh citrus fruits like lemon, orange, and grapefruit are difficult to come by. Locals rely on imports from countries like Turkey, Morocco, and Egypt for their supply of fresh fruit. But even so, citrus fruits in particular are viewed as a special commodity. I never uh, thought about that. So, how does one get a citrus fix when there's no fresh fruit in sight? You are looking at it. This decadent chocolate bar, stuffed with sweet grapefruit filling, delivers enough fruity tang to satisfy any citrus craving. Whether you're eating this bar under sunny skies or a cloud of gray, if it's the latter, you're eating it more like a Russian, this chocolate proves that grapefruit is good, no matter how you get it. It is one of those things that every country has its difficulties with. For example, I live in the pretty much the middle of the USA. It takes me several, several hours to get anywhere on the coast. So if I were to want something, say, like fresh fish, I'm not really gonna get it. Unless it's coming from a river somewhere or a lake. If I want something from the ocean, not so much. So, this was already broken in there, so we're just gonna eat these two, uh, two bits. Uh, looks like a nice dark chocolate. Smells like a nice dark chocolate. So the inside's kind of like a more, um, slightly jellyish texture. Still have mostly chocolate. If you don't like dark chocolate, this would not be for you because this is a fairly dark chocolate we have going here. It is a bit of a grapefruity tang. I have had chocolate orange in other fruits, never with grapefruit, so this is unique. It's an interesting choice. It's still pretty good though. It's very different, which I appreciate. Hello, are you having a good time? Next we have more things in Russian that I don't I don't know why I'm looking. Because none of this I can I can read absolutely none of this. But it's some kind of um, it looks like there might be nuts involved. Possibly peanuts. Maybe some kind of wafer thing. I'm not sure. It'll be a surprise for everybody. Oh, this is the Red October Crepish. I think. It's a soft toffee with peanuts. Oh. We didn't include this yum because it's October, although it's certainly a nice bonus. The real reason is deeply rooted in Russian history. In 1851, a German immigrant named Theodore Ferdinand von Eim, I think, Einem, 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 moved to Moscow with the dream of starting a business. He began selling candy at a baseball shop in Moscow, but due to overwhelming demand, quickly moved to a huge factory on the river. Here's a picture of it. It is a very huge factory. It's quite large. Right on this river here. There we go. By 1913, planes zipped overhead with the company logo, and the factory was supplying sweets to the Tsar himself. But during the onset of World War I, the company was seized by the Soviet government and renamed Red October after Lenin's famous October 1917 government takeover. 
Then during World War II, the government switched the factory production lines from candy to military ration. It wasn't until the war ended in 1945 that Red October finally went back to making candy, and we're certainly glad that they did. Still to this day, Red October produces the most famous chocolates and candies in the country. A perfect example, this crumbly toffee bar with ground peanuts. Oh. I like toffee and I like peanuts, so, so far, this is lovely. And I'm sure, like most Americans, a lot of us think of Red October in terms of a movie. <laughs> Sorry. Featuring Sean Connery as a Russian. Does it work? Technically, no, because he's still Sean Connery. It's like he doesn't even try. But we're okay with that. We love him because he's Sean Connery. So it's basically, um, yes, a toffee bar with peanut things. It does look like it's, like they kind of tr sort of tried to perforate it, but mm, not so much. Ooh, it is soft. Pretty much what it says, soft toffee with peanuts. I like the little perforation so you can kind of like break it off. I think I prefer hard toffee opposed to soft toffee. Not that there's anything wrong with this. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's very sugary. So you gotta be able to handle your sugar. Let us now move on to the yums bag because we have exhausted our supply of things not in the yums bag. And there are only two things, really. Just have two of each thing. One feels like it says caramel on it, but it feels like a hard candy. And the other is something possibly softer. It's Forest Fairy Peanut Delight Honey Taste with a little squirrel on it. Let's see if this will. Well, don't mind the black mark, it's a permanent marker. I scribbled on myself the other day. Oh, oh. You don't ha you can't have any soft topping. I'm sorry, I love you, but you can't have any. We'll give you some snacks later though. That little dog should have some. Okay. Let us start with the Forest Fairy Honey Peanut Delight. Chocolate covered honey and peanut candy. More peanuts, yar. There's an old Russian saying that goes, with honey, you can swallow even a nail. Ah, it's a, wow, I don't know about, that. okay, that's an interesting thing. We're not sure why we're bringing this up. Okay, you certainly shouldn't be concerned about swallowing any sort of metal, especially in this yum. To the contrary, you're getting a taste of delectable peanut and chocolate, all coated with one of Russia's most treasured ingredients, honey. As one of the largest producers of honey in the world, Russia has a long love affair with the amber liquid. In fact, archaeologists discovered honey collecting equipment and cave drawings that depict Russian, ancient Russians enjoying honey from 1500 years ago. Even today, locals use honey for a variety of medicinal purposes, from cold remedies to wound ointments, and claim that just one spoonful can lift the spirits in any occasion. Hence the quote from earlier. So now you know what to do if you are sad once this treat is gone. Grab a spoonful of honey and make yourself feel better. Would you agree, tiniest of beasts, my little tiny creature? Honey. I don't believe you've ever had honey. I don't believe you should either. Let us find out. Ooh, it's covered in chocolate. I don't think they mentioned that. But that's okay. Anything covered in chocolate is always in lovely. Mm. It's on the firmer side. of it. Mm. That's quite nice. If not too sweet, you can get the peanuts in there. It's an interesting combination as well. Are you enjoying yourself, by the way? I hope you are. Do you have your own goblet of milk? He doesn't have his own goblet of milk, but that's okay. Hello. I don't know 
why you think licking my face will get you anything delightful. Because it won't. Little drum dog. Now we have the final candy. This cute little this cute little pink thing here. This is the final thing in our lovely, lovely box. And this is Caramel Dreams. This is caramel with lemon fondant and jam. Ooh, I like this combination. I like fondant. These yums are called Caramel Dreams for a good reason. Why? They'd be lying if they just called them caramel. Caramel, caramel, whichever you prefer. I kind of will say whatever works. These faux caramels won't contain any milk or cream. Ooh, they're not sticky. And they're filled with fondant. A popular confection in Russia, fondant is made from a mixture of boiled sugar and water mixed into a dense, sweet icing. The fondant inside this yum is bursting with zesty lemon flavor and tart apple jam, making it unlike any other candy we've tried before. Be warned, if you're dreaming about soft, creamy caramels, but when you bite into this candy, they might be a nightmare. Maybe that's how this candy got its name. It's dreams, not nightmares. What? Okay, anyway. I'm okay with a faux caramel. I'm intrigued by this particular combination. So it's just like a simple white candy. It's kind of got some waffling texture on either side. So. No scent whatsoever. Wish me luck. So it's mostly a lemon candy, I guess. I can't really taste the apple jam. If it was in there, I sort of missed it. Because that tastes mostly lemon. Which is fine. Pretty basic candy, pretty good. A little bit the some nice sugary, lemony deliciousness. Let us take a final drink from our goblet. And we have officially eaten all the yums in our box. Well, technically not all of them because we haven't finished the bags of snacks, but that's beside the point. You know what I mean. Don't say so, or I'll stick this little one on you. That's right. You don't know what's happening. Anywho, let us continue on. If we had had the uh, yum yum box or the super yum box, we could have still been snacking. And here are a few of the things, because I'm always curious as to what else we might have been having. Uh, Red October Southern Nuts, they are cocoa coated almond fondant. Oh my. The Tula uh, um, Pianic Gingerbread with condensed milk and honey. Hmm. Or pickled cucumber balls. Corn puffs with pickled cucumber. Ooh, curiouser and curiouser. But for now, we are all furnished with our box. So let us read the clue to next month's box. This country is small, but there's a whole lot to see. Streets made of water and blue pottery. Plus pralines, sweet waffles, and large wheels of cheese. You'll be sad when it's over and leave saying, more please. Streets of water, are we in... Or, I don't know, does Greece have a few streets with water? Hmm. Intriguing. I guess we'll have to find out. So, that will be November's box. I thank you for joining for this particular month's fancy dress masquerade party box. I realize now I probably should have painted my nails for added effect, but I didn't, so to bed. Anywho. I still have some extra yums that I'm going to enjoy myself. If you have not yet had your own yums box, you should order one. I'm not being paid to say this, I'm just saying if you want to try stuff from other places, it's a great way to do so, because it's just all kinds of different things. It's fun and delicious, and I enjoy them every month I get them, because you never know what you're going to get. It's always a nice surprise. So I will have to fill out my little, uh, my little thing here about which were my favorites, which were my not favorites. There's always a place for worst yum, and to be honest, I don't often add that in there because most of the yums I have, I really enjoy. And even if I don't enjoy them, it's not because I find them like, ugh, gross. 
I think feel like that's the only time that's happened was probably black licorice from Germany. I don't like black licorice. That is it. Bleh, 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 bleh. Bleh. But I don't like black licorice as it is. Um, and then maybe one other two times. But for the most part, I've had this. I've been getting Universal Yums for several years now. I think at least two years. Maybe. I think. Memory is hard. I'm getting old. But anywho, quite good. For now, tiny dog. We're leaving. We're gonna say goodbye. You know, say goodbye. Say goodbye to people. What are you looking? Come on. So until November, uh, when we go to possibly Venice or Greece or something, it'll be a surprise for everyone. Yes, I love you too. Uh, have a good, happy Halloween. And depending upon when I get the box and when I get that video out, happy, ha happy Thanksgiving for those of you who are in a country that celebrates Thanksgiving, which would be us. And then. I feel like there are other countries that have their own Thanksgiving. May not necessarily be in November, so hey, uh, early or possibly late, happy Thanksgiving to you. And uh, we will see you then.